Good morning, America. It's Coffee Talk with Franco Webb and King Maserati Santana. Every weekday at 8 a.m. Make sure you tune in. You already know what it is, man. It's your favorite host of all time. It's King Maserati Santana. Don't forget to put the king in front of it. I'm riding for him. Vroom, I got another special guest on the Rise TV, man. It's about to be dope. I mean, this is another special guest right here that everybody would like to see, like to hear from. Um, I hope you're subscribing to my channel on the Rise TV. That's with a Z, not with an S. Um, also, hit that notification bell. Find me on Instagram, Mozzie Bracken 18 and on Facebook, Mozzie Roddy Santana. Every time we go live, you see what we drop in the content, and everything is good. I hope everybody's having a good Wednesday out there. Um, I can't introduce this person, man. She can only introduce herself. So without further ado, who do we have on the show today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations on everything you're doing, by the way. Um, my name is Charcy Curtis. Um, I have a podcast as well. It's Unforgot Movement Podcast. Um, and I have a brand, Apparel, which is Unforgot. Um Hey, I'm just excited to be here to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Absolutely. Oh, you, not to say, I, I, I am a hairstylist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm a hairstylist. Yes. Um, Cafe Beauty Shop on Ramsey Street, 4808 Ramsey Street, Suite 104, um, 28311, Hair Villa Exelon. Um, but today we are here to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Absolutely. How you feeling, first off? I'm okay. I'm That's okay. That's great. I'm That's good. great. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show well, for the first you. time. Thank you. For on the Rise me. TV. Mm -hmm. Um, and congratulations to you also. You're in season four yes. on your show. So um, definitely get uh, some definitely good vibes from that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so I just want to just jump right into your interview. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a popular brand, mm -hmm. I'm For God Movement. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how and when did it get started. Well, first of all, it's God's brand because, as you know, we, it says I'm for God. It don't say you for Charcy. Um, the brand was something that, you know, just a conversation I was having one day. I was going to get some shirts made for my uh, beauty shop. Um, and while I was sitting in the car before I walked into the beauty shop, I'm not beauty shop, inside the place where I was getting the shirts made at, mm -hmm. I was just talking to God, you know, sitting in the car. I was like, you know, God, I want to include you in on this. So give me something I can put on a shirt to let people know that I'm not ashamed of our relationship. Now, mind you, I had like 10 shirts I was going to get ready for myself to wear to advertise the shop. I had no intentions on selling shirts and no intentions on, you know, putting it out there for to sell the people. It was personal. So as I go inside the place and um, I go to tell the people, you know, I got 10 shirts I want to get printed on, not knowing these people only print 20 or more pieces. Okay. So as I'm walking in there, let's back it up a little bit. Remember, I had a conversation with God. God, give me something that I want to put on a shirt for let people know I'm not ashamed of my relationship. As I'm sitting there, this like cloudy form just formed in front of me. Mm -hmm. And instantly, I just seen slowly, uh, hashtag, I'm for God, not the word for, the number for, push through the clouds. So I was excited. I was like, oh my God, ain't nobody going to believe me. So let me hurry up and just go inside and tell the people. Did not write it down or nothing. So I walk inside the place um, to tell the lady that um, I got something I want to make, put on some shirts or whatever. As I'm telling her, I guess she said I was excited. So I, she's like, um, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I just need something midair, and I just want to tell you if I forget. She's like, okay, well, let's first do that, you know, for you forget. And I said, okay. So she said, what did you see? I said, well, I seen, you know, it was a cloudy form, and I seen the hashtag, and I seen the I'm, and I seen the four, number four, and God. She said, okay. She wrote it down. Um, she said, so what colors do you want this in? And I was like, Oh, I didn't even think about that. Keep in mind, I seen it all white. Mm -hmm. um, something just rubbed across me, and I just like hit my spirit. Like you know, God got to be different. But they have a color chart. To look at. She said red. I said no. We can't put God in no red. I said put. Try that gold right there. So it's um, for God. The original. This is the original one. The white and gold. So she printed it up, and I said, okay, let's get started. Um, how many? Uh, I want to get some shirts made with the um, with the shop logo on the back, including with the um, for God on the front. She said, okay, so how many shirts you got? I said, I got 10. She said, well, I got the good news, I got bad news. I said, okay, what's the good news? She said, well, we can do it, but we only print 20 or more shirts. Mm. So I had to make a decision right then and there, like, am I going to get these 10 shirts made or am I going to get 20 or more? So I called a couple of people, my clients and um, the people I work with, and I got their sizes, and I had to order more shirts, not knowing what God was going to do. Right. Um, got the shirts made, never forget, um, went to pick the shirts up, 
not expecting nothing like what's going to happen, okay? Passed the shirts out. First person came in. She's like, hey, Charcy, you know, that shirt you um I got for you? Because it has the shop logo on the back. So he's a walking billboard for the beauty shop. And on the front, it said, I forgot. Hashtag, I forgot. She said, um, I was in this line at the grocery store. Long line. She said, the person that front was like, hey, you, with the I forgot shirt. Come here. She not knowing why. She said they let, they let her skip. She said, and the person whispers, I'm going to forgot too. So it was like favorite. I mean, the stories came near and far from the, tw- the other 10 people. Keep in mind, I had 10 shirts by myself or whatever. So the testimonies was really that pushed me um, with the brand, um, I can say. But it started from me just a conversation with God, just saying, you know, God, give me something to put on a shirt to let you know, let people know I'm not ashamed of our relationship, not knowing where it was going to go. Awesome. Um, so what would you say the meaning Behind the I'm for God movement. Basically telling people to get your own relationship with God. That's basically it. Um, it's not, um, I'm not talking about no religion. Just talking about the one God. And just saying, just get your own relationship with God. Basically the unity. Mm-hmm. Um, like I tell people all the time, you know, God, when God gave it, when the Holy Spirit gave it to me, he said two ways you're going to wear it. You're going to wear it. Some wear it for connection. Some wear it for um, just fashion. Those wear it for connection. You tell them to pray over it. And watch you move and shift things in the room. And that's literally what happens. That's why I tell people that have a connection with God, pray over your shirt. See what happened. Um, those with fashion don't worry about it. The same way I grabbed you at a certain time in your life, I do the same thing for them. So not to cut you off, you mm-hmm. suggest everybody pray over everything that they do, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not just over food, because a lot of people just pray over food. Oh, no, everything. Yeah, everything. And it's okay. like I tell people, you know, keep in mind, it's just put it out there. You know, words are powerful. And, I mean, like I said, I, it's so many te- people hit me. That's what keeps me going with the brand is the testimonies. It has nothing to do with the money, because if I go by the money, I'd have been stopped. Mm-hmm. But the testimonies, I get, I mean, kids hit me with, uh, you know, like, um, hey, Charcy, I was getting bullied. I prayed over my shirt, went to school the next day. The person, the bully didn't bother me. They, matter of fact, they spoke to him. Hey, Charcy, um, I went to court today, and I, I was going to wear a suit, but the Spirit told me to put on your shirt. I put on your shirt, and guess where everything got dropped? Hey, Charcy, I went to go visit a friend in the, in the hospital today, and not knowing, you know, my friend in the hospital, sick, he goes, the first thing he says is, hey, I love that shirt you got on. Why you didn't get me one? So he takes off the shirt, give him the shirt to put on, and he walks out with a hospital shirt. Wow. Speeding up that story, he passed, but you know that's the only shirt that uh, item his wife kept because she said she loved her husband's spirit in that shirt. Had a guy um, roll rage. Um, same thing. He said, you know, he, he had all attentions on. He forgot he had a shirt on because it was his favorite shirt. Approached the man that was, you know, roll rage. He said, the man said, first thing he said, the man said to him was, hey, I like that shirt. Instantly, he said, deal with me in a way like that. I'm about to cut a fool, and I'm talking, I represent God. So he had to check himself. Mm-hmm. So, but like I tell people, it's just a self check thing. And it's, I mean, you're basically just saying who you stand for. Correct. Um, now, do you think you have changed lives with the um, For God movement? Of course. Like I said, not me per se. God has through the, um, through the brand. And um, like I was saying, with the testimonies, um, I can go near and far with the testimonies. But like I said, it's not me. It's just God. I'm just a vessel. Like I said, God is the CEO. I'm the vessel to the brand. Right. And you speak so highly of God. Oh, definitely. Um, and you speak so highly of your uh, your movement, too. Yes. And I, I, I like that, mm-hmm. the fact that um, a lot of people, when they express their relationship with God, mm-hmm. they have um, a lot of perspectives. Mm-hmm. But with you, you keep your perspective in, you know, one I, I would say with one perspective, mm-hmm. uh, so for America, I'm talking to you, for everybody out there that want to be closer to God, mm-hmm. that want to build a relationship with mm-hmm. God. We have someone up here with us now, Charcy Curtis, mm-hmm. uh, for I'm For God Movement, um, and she's going to elaborate on how she built her relationship with God. How did you do that? Um, prayer. Um, getting the word, taking the time out with him, because like I said, I haven't always been where I'm at now. Um, every day is a new day. Um, God is still working on me. Nobody's perfect. Um, but I can actually say just that peace that God give you, you can't buy it. It's something that comes strictly from him. Um, I went and traded for nothing in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, when you say like the old you and the new you, I enjoy this walk with God, the new me, um, the old me. And I, I'm big on saying, you know, if God can change me, he can change anybody. Absolutely. And he knows my story. <laughs> saying, I mean, those who check out that podcast, um, you would know my story too. But I don't, I'm not ashamed of nothing. I mean, that's what makes me to who I am today. Um, but I just love the fact that he's forgiving God. Right. You know, and I, I mean, I, 
like I said, just having that relationship start somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. I don't care where you start. Just, right. you know, ask for him. You know, God, clean me up. Mold me into what you have built me to be. And just go from there. Don't let nobody tell you how to do it because it's free. It's free time. It don't cost to get Hey, yo, what's the word? The word is don't change the station. I'll be right back after these messages. King Maserati Santana yeah, on the Rise yeah. TV, baby. Let's go. It's time to get it started. Let's talk about it. Straight down the spot called 8 Yeah. The relationship with God is so free. Right now, she has the Alpha God movement in America, but guess what? Though she also has a website. Please elaborate on the website. You can go to alphagod.com to get uh, all your apparels. Um, you can go to underscore Alpha God um, on Instagram. You can go to Alpha God movement on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You can go to the um, boutique face cafe boutique on Ram Street, 4808 Ramsey Street, Suite 10, for some of the apparels there as well. Um, so we do pop-ups, you know, you just never know where we might be at, and uh, we sell the apparel as well. So, I mean, it's just really not, I'm not trying not to be not hard fine. Right. And you got some good some good brands, too. Oh, yeah. I, I, you I, know? Yeah. Garden be the glory. Like I tell people, you know, the red four is definitely for those that, you know, uh, G- Jesus Christ all day. The white and goes for the other religions or whatever. Because, um, like I said, I don't go back and forth with the religions. I mean, me, myself, yes, I do believe in Jesus Christ. Um, but... For the most part, like I said, the white and gold stand for the unity. Just mm. the one guy that we all can stand for. Now, you are a woman of many hats. Yes, I am. You are a hairstylist. <laughs> yes, I'm a mother. Yeah, yeah. A mother of a boy. Exactly. <laughs> a now, you, a you are a mother of, of how many? Two. Boy yeah. and a girl. Okay. Boy, I'm um, 24. A girl, 12. She'll be 13 next month. And boy, he be 25 in March. Right. Yeah, yeah I am. I am too. Yeah. And you seem to be proud of that. And a grandmother. I got a, oh, I'm yeah, a, a grandmother. I'm a proud <laughs> grandmother. Yes. Right. I'm a Boy and girl, Jemai, Ava, yes, um, two and three, yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and you're and you're proud. Oh yeah, right. Um, but you are a hairstylist, a mother, um, mm-hmm. of two, and a grand and a grandmother. grandmother of mm-hmm. one. Yeah, um, two of two. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. one girl. My son had a born girl. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, and um, you have your website popping off. Mm-hmm. You have your Alpha for God movement, mm-hmm. um, and also you have a podcast. Yes, mm-hmm. tell us about the podcast. The podcast is basically to enlighten to people to understand if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. So I just want to, you know, people want to bottle God up and say, you got to walk this way, talk this way. But no. Like I said, it's free time, making that time out with God, starting a relationship and going from there. So what I did was I'm allowing you to see somebody else's testimony. Maybe you can relate to them. Maybe not. Maybe you may know somebody can relate to them. It's just to help somebody understand if he did it for this person, what you think he'll do for you. Mm. So that's the whole thing. So what makes your podcast different from others? Um, allowing them to be them and tell their testimony. Some people, you know, who rarely ask, like, you know, about you. Like, how are you doing today? What did, what happened with you when you was a young child? Or tell me that part of you. They, they don't really talk too much about what God did or their relationship with God. So I would say it would have to be more or less, like I said, allowing them to tell their testimony and tell how, what was that first time, like, with God when you realized he was real. And see, a lot of people, they come up with concepts of podcasts. Mm-hmm. They create these podcasts. Mm-hmm. But they really just create podcasts just to... You do what's trending, right? right? But see, God gave you a mission, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And so to start off your podcast is for testimonies, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. So what would you say your end game would be with your podcast? Um, I would have to say, like I said, to allow people to understand that if God did it for me or the other any of the guests that I have on there, he'll do it for you. So, he, I mean, he's not going to never give up on you. It's just you taking the time out to build that relationship. And I have to back it up. Even with the podcast, how it even came about, that was all God. You know, um, it was during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a phone call from a friend of mine, and um, they he was like, hey, Charcy, you know, the Holy Spirit told me to call you and tell you to start a podcast. Anybody know me? I'm not. I just, matter of fact, the brand got me talking. Anybody know me? I was a quiet person. I really didn't talk. If I knew you, I talked to you. Other than that, I didn't talk to you. But because of the brand, it changed me. I had certain things I had to do. And like I said, they called, and they was like, hey, you need to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Of course, I didn't really know what that was at the time. And I was like, uh, well, okay, what is that? And he was like, well, you know, it's you talking to him. Like, I said, well, you know, I ain't big on talking to no mic or being on no say. I'm not into that kind of stuff. I'm just the back, you know, like behind the scene. So I said, mm, I'm not interested. It was like, well, I'm being obedient. Before you say completely no, can you please just look at the space? So like I said, going back to if you know the vision, when I first seen it, it was all white, right? So I said, okay, I look. Came to the place where he had me meet him to see where the location would be. And when I walked in the room and seen all this white, I was like, wait a minute, God. Where was the room? It was here. 
<laughs> it was here. It was here. Um, and a Deep Freeze production. And like I said, to see all the white, it was like, okay, God, you're really playing me right now. Let me back it up a little bit. A lady gave me a note. 2017, I was um, had a stand at a crown at the Crown Gospel concert. Mm -hmm. Complete stranger, and I'm big on when people say, you know, God said this, God said that. Got to tell you first. So I was like, okay. Um, lady walks to me and said, God told me to give you this note. I'm looking at no like her. What you mean, God told me to give you this note? She opens it. She said, before you open it, can I just tell you one thing? Now that this is before I open the note. Now mind you, two months prior to that, God had told me something about doing a book. When God said it, I just brushed out like, no, God, wrong person. So for this lady to walk up to me and say, God said for you something about doing a book, hold up, how do you know that? I only talked to God about that. You know what I'm saying? So she said, but he said for you to do it, either be your whole life or where the brand start. So mm -hmm. instantly in 2017, like what I'm doing now, I would have never did. Um, I told her, well, it won't be my life. It will be from the brand because I ain't telling my life story. Absolutely. But it, on the note, it had 2020 in the middle. Now, this is 2017, 2020 in the middle, and the top it had book, in parentheses, at the very top it said threes, third quarter, third month. Now, keep in mind, I said to the, I said, well, let me um, go pray about it, and I, you know, when can we meet up to see exactly what is it that you want me to do? I prayed, and this note stood out to me like it never stood before. I had this since 2017 now. I'm like, God, is you telling me this is a jump? I'm taking this as, yeah, you is, because I never paid a note, no attention, right? So I go to the meeting. What did everything be in? Threes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sitting out at the meeting. I said, okay, y'all not going to believe this. I tell them at the meeting, you know, about the note or whatever. I'm expecting to do, like, maybe one or two seasons or nothing. You know, okay, just prove a point. But now, like you said, I'm here and now in my fourth season. You know, to God be the glory. So that's exactly how it started was because God is something God already told me. The note said 2020, third month, when did the world shut down? Third month of 2020. Mm -hmm. So it was like, only thing I had to complete on this note, because the meeting was in threes. Everybody, everything was threes. And was the third quarter. Do you know my third season ended on third quarter? So was that like a leap of faith for you? Oh, definitely. Definitely. So when you talk about faith, and we know mm -hmm. that the Bible say faith without works is what? It's dead. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So how does that make you feel that you took a leap mm -hmm. on faith? Mm -hmm. And it turned out to for you to be in your fourth season, mm -hmm. and things been going well with your movie. Oh my, it's it's amazing. I I, I look back y'all all the time, and like I said, when I think about it, and I see people with the brand on, I say, God, look at you showing out. I don't say look at my brand. Yeah, I say God, look, look at, look at God, you showing man. out. You showing it because they could have wore anything else, but they're wearing your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, so it makes me feel good. And even like I said, to hear the testimonies and hear people. When I did open up, because if you go to this um, subscribe and look at the, you'll see where I opened up my first three. I told about myself and keep in mind, I told the lady I would never. But God made soften me up when I walked through the doors of the deep freeze to say, you know, no, you need you got we overcome by a testimony. So your testimony is gonna help somebody else. And people actually reached out to me and was like, hey. How did you deal with that? How did you overcome it? So I had it. I don't mind talking about it, but as long as I'm healing or helping someone, I'm not gonna just talk about you something to talk about. But um, I mean, I just be it just is it's amazing. It's speechless. Right. And like in in so I wanna take it back. Mm -hmm. Um you you said that your vision was all white mm -hmm. and it led you to the deep freeze. Mm -hmm. Um how has the relationship mm -hmm. with you and your podcast, even working with Vic Frost mm -hmm. and being and being like one of the first originals mm -hmm. from the Deep Freeze Productions? Like, how does that make you feel? How has it been for you for these four seasons? Mm -hmm. Because that's something people don't get in the four seasons. Yeah, man. but I'm more of a I can't, look. I'm, it's all for God. I'm a real humble person. Right. I don't even really, and uh, I got to say thanks to Vic a lot because yes. he helped me so much um, behind the scenes with this. And it, um, it's funny because I, when I look back, I'm like, okay, expect to do, like I said, a couple of them. And he's going to say, nah, you, it's not for you. Right. But it was like, he's like, you got to keep going. Absolutely. You can't, it's, it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, but I ain't, I'm not built for this. Yes, you are. And I was like, okay, if you say so. But like I said, it's all God. It's literally me. It's like I get up and Holy Spirit sit down. Mm -hmm. And I just allow whatever need to be said and allow people just to tell their testimonies. And I just go from there. Because like I said, it's all God's work. It has nothing to do. I don't even care what you know about Charcy, whatever. But just know I'm far from perfect. 
Um, but at the same time, we all got scars. Right. We all wear masks. Mm-hmm. You know, it's up to you when you take your mask off. How well do you wear your mask? Some don't never take their mask it's off. Never. And some, so it's just up to you. It's just being the better example, allowing people to know that side of you and say, hey, I've been there. You're not by yourself. Hey, you can push through. It's going to be okay. Right. Um, don't get caught up in what you see because what it looked like it ain't always is. But I can promise you, you know, like I said, and I can't express it enough, getting your own relationship with God, it would change your life in a way that only he can. It's not going to be easy because I tell you, when I used to, I used to say, don't me, listen, it was it was what it was. But with God, it's a totally different. It's a, that peace of mind I can't express more enough. That peace of mind I give you that He gives you only He can give it to you. You know you're going through whatever it is, but you'll push through it because you know you're gonna come out of it. Right. So it's um and then like I I'm big on your mind. You know it starts from the mind. So if you can't control your mind, you're already in the battle of losing. Right. So why not feed that mind with His Word and talking to Him? So. Just like I said, getting I can't express enough, getting your own relationship with God, like it'll help a whole lot. Cause it shows hang me a whole lot. Cause sometimes when I really say something or not um gotta like dangle the brand up in my face and I'll be like, Oh, you know what? God just saved you. Cause the old me be ready to come out. God just saved you. I'm gonna be quiet. Right. I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let God handle you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let God handle you. Right. That's, I'm that's gonna be quiet. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, um I like I said, I can't express enough. I I'm just I don't really I don't get hyped about stuff like certain listeners. Right. Like Please subscribe to my channel, On The Rise TV, where you can catch the latest episodes on On The Rise TV and the baddest radio show in the land, On The Rise Radio, with your king, Mozzie Roddy Santana. Make sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Mozzie Bracken 18 and also on Facebook, Mozzie Roddy Santana. Man, you don't never want to miss no episode. God is not about me. Now, I'm going to throw something. I'm, I'm going to throw something on you. Mm-hmm. Um... With with while we're on your podcast, mm-hmm. do you have a memorable moment on your podcast? That is so many. that you can think. Of. I know it's so many, but one that you can think of a memorable moment uh-huh. from the Alpha God Movement podcast. I would have to say the kids and the concept of the kids one. It was more or less I was showing people how a, um, a child that has a single parent mm-hmm. from one that had both of their parents and one was raised with both of their parents and one was raised with both but separated. So my thing was to show you which one you think had the most problems. So I'm going to allow you to, those viewers to go look and see, and you tell me which ones. I'm not going to tell you. But um, to hear the stories, and um, the, of course, the, my daughter was on there, and um, my sister's daughter and a friend of mine's daughter was on there. And just to hear the kids say what they said, yeah. but all of them let you know what, how, what their relationship with God was, that was a beautiful moment. That was really a beautiful moment. Right. And whatever, so I have to, you know, um, I, but all my guests, I have it was you know touchable, and they, you know, like I said, no testimony is the wrong testimony, it's your testimony. Right. So, all of them, I have to say, right now, getting off the podcast, mm-hmm. you also, like I said, you're a woman mm-hmm. of many hats, yes. Now, you also have a woman empowerment movement as yes. well, yes. Um, can you please elaborate on how did you start this women empowerment movement? Um, it started for me, like I said, I do hair, um, hairstylist um, first. And people, my clients and other people, I'm always encouraging, um, counseling people and stuff. And they was like, Charcy, you need to start a move, uh, movement of women empowerment. Thing. I'm like, oh, that's not, I'm already doing, you know, just no, no, no. And it was like, no, people need to hear you. They need to da, 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 da. And I heard the spirit say, but I helped you. I'm like, oh, here we go. So I was making excuses. Each one teach one, right? Right, exactly. So okay. I'm making excuses and stuff. They was like, I'll help you. All you got to do is just show up. And I'm like, okay. It was towards the end of the year. And matter of fact, it's called Getting Past Your Brokenness. And what I'm doing is um, it's basically to let women know, like I said, it starts with the mind. And understand, once again, if someone else went through it, you can go through it and you're going to be okay. Um, and helping them understand, let's help each other women, sister. I'm going to help you get through this, and you're not alone. So getting past your brokenness, that's what it's about. I do not record, um, let no cameras or nothing, because it's private. You will get some footage with the beginning but and the ending, but I don't allow because I want them to feel comfortable and be able to express and let it out and not feel embarrassed or anything like that. Um, so I'm really trying to help heal women because I have a bigger thing I'm trying to do, and it's for men. So I'm going to need these women to be healed before I do the man part. Right. And um, But... 
it, like I said, you know, um, for clients and people that push me and believe in me, and, uh, and they was just like, hey, you know, you already do it. Let's let's take this on another level. And they was there for me to help me with the first one. Now that second one, it, God was testing me. <laughs> <laughs> he was, oh my God, he was testing me. But I gotta actually say, but he always tests his soldiers. Oh yes, oh God, did he test me? And I was ready to throw in the towel for real. But I can actually say by me sticking in there, he actually came through like only he can right. and you know what I'm saying I just took it as he was just testing me to see like so when times get hard you're gonna give up and I mean actually like I said I had to I pushed and I, I pushed through it and I was glad I did because like I said it's bigger than me um it's so I'm like I said whatever he want me to do I'm just here for it right you know so like I said just yeah if, if I got to show you how to do it I don't mind I'm, I'm very much available for them such for him anyways to help anybody understand it he's available anytime I have a special line. He got the same line I got. That's dope. <laughs> I think that's dope. Uh, now, so at what point mm -hmm. was your breakthrough moment, though? Through all of this going on, what was your breakthrough moment? I had a couple. Um, I have to say um, the rape when I was raped at a young age. Um, oh, wow. I, I didn't realize, and believe it or not, the podcast helped me with that. I already, I like to say, um, I don't let it control me. Mm -hmm. I control it. Um, but I didn't realize cause somebody had called me. He was like, um, I was over it. You know, God healed me from that or whatever. I could talk about it. Um, but actually somebody had hit me up and I was like, Hey, how, what was your, what was your, um, moment when you just like realized it, enough was enough. And I never really thought about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wait a minute, what was my time? And believe it or not, it was the time, um, I, it was my, my cover up point. What was my cover up point? My cover up point was cause I was a time boy. So I was being a tomboy to cover up, to dummy down my look, because I didn't want nobody to look at me. And of course, you didn't want to get raped again. It's exactly. So with that being said, I, you know, turned to like this tomboyish thing. But when I realized, um, it, when I had my, when I found out I was like, having a boy, I was like, you know, um, I need to switch this look up because I'm looking too much like a boy. So I instantly cold turkey just 360 got into all the girly girl stuff, and it was nothing against nobody. It's just something personally I wanted to do. So I just did it for my son so he'd know the difference, boy, girl. So I cold turkey um, started really doing a girl. Anything girly, I was doing it. Just, you know, because I wanted to make him, make him understand. And like I said, not realizing why I did the tomboy look was because I was raped. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't want nobody to look at me in that kind of way. So it's only right to follow up. Mm -hmm with a question like I'm about to ask you, mm -hmm. um, dealing with something like that, mm -hmm. that was a tragedy oh, yeah. that you was dealing with, mm -hmm. even dressing up as a tomboy to mm -hmm. cover up and not to have history repeat itself. Mm -hmm. um, how was your relationship with God then? Mm -hmm. Did you trust God? Did you Did you believe that he would bring you out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my grandmother's father, my grandmother's father was a um, pastor, so I was raised in, you know. Uh, yes, of course, I always had it. Really, it's, fu it's really funny. My first time really testing God, like I say, I was young. And I remember if I, um, I made a prayer, mm -hmm. and I used to, um, I was the oldest, one of the oldest cousins, but the younger ones was developed a little faster than me. And I had prayed to God, and I was like, God, you know, um, give me, Cause they was like I said they had tatas and I I was one of the older ones and I was like why well, mine ain't you know developed as theirs so I'm young and I I was like God give me, every night before prayer God make sure you give me some tatas give me some tatas which is titties and literally as time went on of course I outgrown them in that area and I wish I would have been more specific on that prayer and told God exactly what I want. That's when I really realized, like, okay, God is real. Because, yeah. I mean, I was only talking to God every night, like, literally. And it was, like, out of nowhere, here they go. You know what I'm saying? So I just wish I would have been specific on that. <laughs> but right. other than that, that's when I really, um, my real moment of, like, prayer do work. Yeah, that you knew he was real. Then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, at a young yeah. age. And so, I mean, um, but, yeah, that, that I have to say, yeah, that was that, was that moment. Right. Um Man, and you know, America, if you guys don't have a story or a moment where you don't know that God is real, maybe you should check yourself. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Maybe you need to start paying attention more to yourself and not to your surroundings. Pay attention to yourself. What self-love mean to you? Yeah. You know, you got to keep that in mind. 
Um, but going back to you, Charzy, mm-hmm. through all of this mm-hmm. and everything that you have been through, do you feel like that you have the right people around you? For the most part, yeah. Yeah, I do. The sermon okay. is everything. Okay. Um, so, yeah, for the most part, yeah. And it's, it's, one thing about it, if they don't, God will get rid of them. Right. Yeah. And, and has there ever been a moment? Oh, yes. Where God got rid of people that was in your life? Um, yeah. I mean, of course, did he move them right out of the way when you don't even, you know, it's not for you to realize. Right. You just make them just fade off. And it's not for you to question. Um, and go forth and move on what he said. Right. Now, considering where you at in your life now, mm-hmm. do you think you spent your time wisely? <sighs> mm, yeah, no. I'm, you know, every day is, is a different day. Um, I'm doing much better. Um, mm-hmm. But for the most part, I spend more time with him than I ever have because of, I mean, it's just, you know, one of them things that you just, when you know you do better kind of thing. So, and I just see the difference. And, and when you don't, you see it, find yourself straying away. So I just... My focus now is definitely more time with him because right. time is short. And I, I mean, people are dropping, you know, like left and right. I don't know what my time is, but I just want to make sure I do what his will is, if nothing else. I mean, he done saved me through so many things car accidents, head on collisions, brakes go out, end up in a ditch. And I mean, I am on all the accidents, I walk out without a scratch. That was nothing but God never had a seatbelt on. Not bragging about that, didn't have a seatbelt on. Not to cut you off, but you wasn't you in a car crash? Yeah, I was in two. I was um, when I was eight um, eight months pregnant with my son. Um, I was in the car, no seat, but um, brakes went out. Um, pregnant and the car, I closed my eyes because at this moment, you know, brakes out. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't hmm. stop the car. You know, the, the car is coming. It's good. It won't be a head on collision then because you know, but I didn't want to see it. So I instantly closed my eyes, praying to God. Took my foot off brakes. Brakes don't work. You know. And I pray to God, I said, God, have your way, have your way. With all I actually do, you know, if do not bring my child in this world without me. So in my mind, I really thought I was dead, okay? There's no question asked. But wow. at that point, I knew where I was going because I, you know, my grandma and I've been to church and everything else. But <laughs> um, to wake up and to be backwards in a ditch, yeah. um, did not know if I was alive because I'm doing everything in slow motion. The back all shattered, but I didn't have a cut. It's like God took his hands and just protected the seat. The shield over Oh, yeah. The passenger driver front, that ain't broke. But the back, all shattered. So all that glass should have flew up and cut me, but it didn't. So at this moment, like I said, I think I'm dead. I slowly opened the door. And I, in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm going to look back at the chair and I'm going to see my body. I'm angel about to come get me. So let me get ready. Open the door. Get out the car. I took a second. I looked back at the chair. Nothing there. I was like, God, what's going on? To this day, I feel like it's an angel. Um, the person I can't remember was a man or woman. It was like, hey, are you okay? I was like, you can see me? It was like, yeah, I can see you. I was like, you can see me? Yes, I can see you. Uh, I'm clueless because, like I said, I'm thinking I'm dead. So they didn't want to take me to no hospital or anything. Um, my aunt stayed on the street. They took me to my aunt's house, and I went to the um, – she. I called the doctor, and he was like, are you bleeding? Are you this? No, no, no. He's like, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Like I said, I mean, that was nothing but God. You know, um, other accident, head on collision. Um, I prayed to God, seen the car. God, this ain't it. I can't be it. You got me with this brand. Ain't no way. This is when 2019. And I felt like that was his way of getting my attention. Like, didn't I tell you I was getting doing something in 2020? You that was right here? before the pandemic. Yeah. And mind you, like I said, the lady gave me the note, 2017. So and to me, God was, that was November 1st. 2019 when I had a night head on collision. And to me, and I haven't seen that all that time, I'm not promoting that, but I gotta be honest. And I was going 75 miles per hour on the way to Atlanta to a hair show convention, but instantly I was like, God, this can't, I know this ain't it, it can't be. You know what I'm saying? Spoke life, blacked out. Well, no, before I blacked out, I remember saying, you know, talking to God, something like, this can't be it. I heard the spirit say, turn the wheel. Turn the wheel, then I blacked out. Um, when I um, woke up, I never forget my hunger was like, um, are we in heaven? I don't know. The car's all fogged up, whatever. I'm in my mind, like, if we are, I need to go talk to God because I know I just had a conversation with him. He got time to send me back. So as the car started clearing out, um, literally, um, I realized we were still here. You know what I'm saying? I was okay, God, we good. I don't even know if my body is, what kind of in, what kind of condition my body in because all you could see was just his hand. Mm-hmm. She was able to get out of the car, but I wasn't. 
Um, they had to cut me out of Jaws of Life. Um, when they cut the car off and cut cut me out of the car or whatever, um, they put that neck thing on your neck and everything. I'm like, I'm good. I don't need all that. It was like, man, we got to do this. Be still. And I'm just like, I'm good. I'm big on wearing an Alpha God apparel when I travel. So I have my jean, Alpha God um, jacket on, my leggings, whatever. And I never forget, they cut cut all your clothes off. I didn't know that. And I was I hollering. It was like, did I cut you? And I was like, no, you didn't cut me. They was like, I see cut my covenant though. And they was like, girl, if you don't be quiet and be still, you know. Um, went did the x-rays, God be the glory. Wasn't nothing, no bleed internal, nothing. I mean, I walked away with that accent without a scratch. You know, wow. that's nothing but God. Wow. In America, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, is Charcy Curtis, is she a saint? Is she's perfect? No. Nah. You know, all of this, all of this and above. Mm -hmm. You know, we all got our own perspectives, you know what I'm saying? But here's a question for her, though. Mm -hmm. um, are you, how would I say this? I'm definitely not perfect. Do people run across you and think that you're God? Um, I would hope not. I mean, you have those that, you know, they question, they trying to find their way with God or whatever, and I always lead them back to God. I never try to be him. I, I can't. I would never, you know, but you have those that's lost, and they're looking for information. And like I tell them, you know, you got the same line I got. Mm. I don't got no special line. He's available anytime. Right. Um. Because it's like I said, so many people are lost and they're just trying to find their way. But yeah, it'd be people that try to coach you and be, you know, in them coats and, you know, no, definitely, yeah. But I, I have had those approach. I'm like, no, I'm not by far, right. you know, so yeah. Um, I really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, we had the infamous Charcy Curtis on the show, man. Uh, don't forget to tune in to her podcast, and that's on. I forgot. Um, YouTube on I forgot. On your podcast, I forgot movement. Um, unforgot.com the I, the M, the number four in G-O-D um, you have an Instagram, underscore Unforgot and Facebook, Unforgot Movement so definitely I mean, y'all get y'all apparel and like I said, you gotta represent who you for either you for me or you not Absolutely. You got a point in time right now, you gotta say who you for how'd you feel about being on the Rise TV? Hey, I, I appreciate you bringing me on here um, definitely enjoyed it, something different yeah. you know, a different platform, but I mean like I said, you know, you just never know how God is working. Any kind of way to put his word out there, I'm fine. I'm, I'm with it. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you blessing this platform. Mm -hmm. um, keep um, being um, for God. Oh, I would say that. <laughs> and, and and keep his movement alive mm -hmm. as well as we keep that movement alive mm -hmm. from looking in from the outside to the, to the inside. Right. But, um, but like I said, it, yeah. takes, it helps from the people. Like I said, testimonies keep... I'm going to keep it alive because that's what keep me going with the brand. So as long as I'm getting testimonies, I'm going to keep it alive. Absolutely. Well, America, you heard it first here on The Rise TV with the infamous Miss Charcy Curtis. Um, we had her on the show today, man, and she dropped some gems. And for everybody out there that don't believe in God, man, after you watch this show, you should believe in God. So you already know what time it is, man. I've been your favorite host, Maserati Santana. Don't forget to put the king in front of it. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't just subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Every time we drop a new interview, you getting it first. So you already know. Find and follow me on Instagram, MaziBracken18. Also on Facebook, Maserati Santana. And to next time, love and peace and happiness, man. Vroom out of here. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. It's time to get it started. Let's talk about it. Straight out of spot car 8-4. Yeah.